stumbled on episode three of my Building the Black Pearl All Scenario version, welcome. And as you can see, I have the middle deck in place. I have the lower deck all set up and ready to go. So let me go into some details as far as how I got to this point. I'm going to cover the lighting on that lowest level and how to make the lanterns. And then there are some segments on any challenges that I came across and uh, you know just how to get it fit together just right because you want it just right. Here's an example of a completed door with the hinges in place and it's fully operational. What I used to make this is a little ring again that I picked up at Hobby Lobby in their jewelry making department then took them together the rod that goes through the door is made out of 24 gauge vintage bronze wire. Here's a good example of why I really like this drill press table. I was able to set the fence up so I can drill these holes for the little uh, pull knobs or pull loops and I can put them all in the exact same spot. Very helpful little tool. I run into my first setback and it's because I missed a step or two in the instructions. My first error was putting the lights on. Remember I said I'd installed some lanterns. Well these back two, there's one on each side, should not be put on until the doors are put in place. And then my next issue was I had placed the rum cabinet underneath this brace and that's where another door goes. This is the single door. So I had to pry out the rum cabinet and all the bottles that were at one time on the floor. If you look close you can see a couple marks where they were. And uh, I was able to, to salvage them without damaging them. A couple marks on the floor but that'll be out of sight. I will have to decide where to put the rum cabinet. For now it's just sitting there, it's not glued in, and then the bottles. I may put it in that general location. I had preferred it on this side, but I've already got a bunch of barrels covered with netting and they're actually glued in place. That's my first kind of major setback. Oh, and here's another thing. No one in my family likes my little monkey. And I wasn't done with him. Years ago we had a little toy set of Noah's Ark and it had all kinds of animals and all kinds of little monkeys. He was too tall so I was altering his legs and I was making him fuzzy and everyone says he looks like a rat or a pig with a tail. So unless there's overwhelming support from my viewers saying leave him in, he's probably not going to make it aboard the ship. A couple areas that threw me off just a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit, is the panels that have the doors. There's two of them. One of them has a single door and the other has two doors. This particular one with one door is part number E2 and it goes at the front of the ship. It's hard to tell from this indication where it's supposed to go. So what helped me determine it is it, it fits just right at the location that it goes at with the brace supports and things like that. Then the next one, which is part E1, I couldn't find anywhere and I was just overlooking it. Here's a photograph of it. E1. You can kind of see there. there's the window of the door and then this door is open. And again it will only fit in where this uh, support members are and it fits just right. And if you look closely you can kind of tell that's actually the back of the ship. And the other was the rum cabinet or the wine cabinet, whatever you want to call it, where to position it on the ship. And I think you actually have your own options where you put it. But if you look closely at these photographs it is across from one of the uh, cells, prisoner cells. So you can see the prisoner cell here and there's the wine cabinet. I have the prisoners chains in place. You can see I've added a few in each cell. And across the way 
I've got a small pair that are just on a hook that maybe would be like handcuffs, I suppose. I did not put any on the far side. It's not going to be visible. I already know it's, it's just going to be real dark in there. I saved myself some labor and didn't put any in there. One small item I forgot to mention is the kit does come with quite a few water buckets. Uh, the handle's not on. I put the handles on just a little piece of brass wire. And to simulate water, I put just a, a little bit of a blue paint in the very bottom of the bucket and then filled that with Gorilla Glue. And so far, it kind of looks like there's water in the bucket with a little blue tint. I will place those at random places around the ship. On this lower level I've got two. One there and then one out amongst those barrels right there. While preparing to work on these uh, prisoner quarters, I also realized that I'm going to have a lot of electrical work to do and lights to post on these. So as I mentioned before, I look ahead, so several pages into it, you get a hint of how to put the lights together, and it gives a reference. So you might want to take a picture of, of slides 123 through 125, 125, and there's more information. It is clear how they go together, but it's not clear about how tiny these parts are. Here the parts are to make the lamps, and I just want to point out how tiny these are, which will be really neat. I, I'm really appreciative that they're in the kit. Several parts to make each one. Beginning with a 3 16 inch dowel rod, I wrap the cage for the lantern around that to give it a form. Then I remove it and clasp all the, uh, the little hooks together that you can see using a combination between needle nose pliers and tweezers to get that effect. Then I returned it to the 3 16 inch dowel rod, which I actually then sanded down to a little bit smaller size and then uh, form the round shape that it actually is. Okay, next you're gonna take the light and get the two ends of the wire and I don't think this is humanly possible without using a magnifying glass. And I just kind of have it on my fingertip. And again, remember there are ridges around this piece, so you need to make sure that the ridges is where you feed the wire through. Now I can feed those two wires through there gently. Feeding that all the way down to that LED lamp. And now I take the lantern, position it so it fits that ridge as best I can. And we're going to bend those little tabs over. And it's good to have not trimmed your fingernails because they come in handy to push these tabs in part way and once you get it part way then needle nose tweezers to help bend those around to hold it in place if you want you can extra secure it a little bit with a, just a drop of CA glue Next is to cut out three more shapes. So you've got the, the larger, the medium, and the very small. You have all three of those cap pieces on there. And the little top one is a little high. And what I've been doing is just putting a little CA glue right there and then sliding that down gentle pressure pulling the light to the top and there's the lantern 
So there's four. I have three more already made out in the garage. I'm going to make one more. Then I can continue with that lowest level deck. While I'm making these, the manufacturer recommends that you test the lamps so you know the polarity because they have to go a certain way or they will not light. So I've taken a resistor and I just soldered it to the top of a, a battery. They recommend a CR2025. You want to touch the, the wires. Now this is the plus side and I already know from testing it, plus is the little brown wire. There's a little brown coating on this one. And then the negative goes to the black wire. You can see that there's light in my lantern. That helps you confirm that you have the right uh, polarity for your LED lights. And you can also make sure they work that way. I've glued a resistor to the positive side of this little uh, uh, battery disc. You don't need to do that, and I just did as a safety precaution. I didn't want to burn out any of the bulbs. I wasn't familiar with them. The only thing the resistor does is you'll get less glow, and you don't have to worry about burning that bulb out. And if I don't go through the resistor and just touch the battery, you see you get a much brighter light. So you don't really need to put the resistor on there. I have the lanterns in position on the lowest deck and I've got the wiring run but I'm gonna have to do something different one thing that is nice with the updated version of this pearl in earlier versions all the wires were the same color in this particular kit there's two different colors brown and black and I, th I think I've got it lit well enough that you can see that on mine, brown are positive, the black are the negative, but I have so much excess wire that I want to shorten this, and I'm concerned this is so fine, I don't think I would be able to strip it without just cutting it. So I have a technique that I've seen online, and I'm going to give it a try. Here's one of the sets of wires, and I'm going to go ahead and cut off the tip. Now what I've been told is just take a lighter and just for a, a, just a second hold the flame under it and then grab it with your finger and peel it off. We're going to see if I burn the tip of my finger. I have my handy and dandy wet paper towel sitting right here. So I'll be able to tap my hand down. Uh, Excuse my dirty fingernails. I've been working and I've paint under them and all kinds of things. So, my apologies for the dirty fingernails. So, here we go. Just under it for a second. Peel it off. It did not burn my fingertip. Experience is a good teacher. I finished all the black wires and I'm over here to the brown ones. And what I've determined, you don't need to wipe it off while it's hot. You're just wiping off the ash. So, you can see it burned off. You can wait a second or two and then just wipe it off and the wire's bare. You can see the wire burn, turns to ash. Wipe it off. Scrape it lightly if you want. The lighter technique works. It strips the uh, casing off that very thin micro wire. And now I can shorten down my wires and start getting the electrical part hooked up. I've got one of those uh, little disc batteries, 2540 or something like that. I forget what the number is. And I've taken all those real tiny micro wires and soldered them into a little bit bigger wire. It's still real small, but that's easier to work with. I don't have to worry about breaking it. And I'll tie those into the other lights in the same way once I get to the other decks. So that's connected and starting at the front. 
Now I hope you can see that that is lit. And then the next one is lit. This will be the closed area of the ship and I wanted to add a little light just so you can see these chains a little better because the ship, the open end, will be over here. So let me shut the lights out and see what kind of a glow we'll pick up on the camera. Here's the view in very, very dimly lit. So really I'm just showing you the lanterns and how they appear in the dark. So the lights are successful and I'm ready to put on the center deck. In the process of test fitting the middle deck and you've got to get it down low to get this notch to match up. And again, this is just a test fit. I've got another rib that comes up through here. See, you've got to do that at an angle. I don't want to snap it in place, but that's the angle, and then it'll slide in. I also did file these down a little bit, made them just a, a hair bit wider. I think I have the lowest deck ready to go. There's a possibility I could add more things as time goes on, but for now I think I'm ready to place the second deck or the middle deck. Let's go through and let me feature some things. Uh, you can see one of the doors here. This is the front of the ship and it is fully operational. I'm probably going to leave it open a little bit. I've got my rum cabinet or wine cabinet in place and if you look down in there you can see the empty and broken bottles. Lanterns are all in place. I will do a circuit test here momentarily. Again some more barrels. These are newer. A lot of rope work that I've put in there. More supplies. And here is that pile of junk and uh, I think you can see the, the priceless painting there that has been discarded because they don't know what it's worth. Some of the other things, an old ship's bell. Uh, these are things I had left over from other builds. There's a small anchor you might see at the top. There's a door, a window, and just little odds and ends. Here's the middle deck in place and these are the little pieces that will pop out. I'll probably leave them out, but uh, for the initial, while I'm gluing, I'm going to uh, leave them in there because it's pushing everything into the position it should be in. In hindsight, I wish I would have notched these out a little more on the uh, far side so that I, I would have a little bit more maneuverability. This is very snug in there and I'd like to have a little more give and take because it's going to be tough to get any glue under it. I, I started to try and glue it and then I realized well I want to make sure this gets in and I had to do a lot of uh, trimming of this etching this out. It is fitting good and it is all the way down on the the support structures underneath. That's just something in hindsight or the next ship that I do I'll probably make these notches a little oversized. This will give you an idea approximately what you'll be able to see. The painter's tape is to represent where it'll be planked and then there'll be some planking up here and a little bit of planking down here that you'll be able to see into the side of the ship. So, again, some of the things are way back in the background, and obviously the poor lighting right now. I can't, uh, can't show you uh, real well. So I'm pretty happy with uh, the start that I have. So again, let me go 
top side. So this is more the top looking down. And there you can definitely see the Mona Lisa in there. Some barrels of fruit. There's one of the water buckets. Skeletal remains. Some supplies. More remains. More remains. And the rum bottles. Top of the ship, these will be the removable grates, so you will be able to see all the way down if you take them out. You see some other cells across the way. This will be a ladder ac access port. So that's the status I'm at. I do have all the lights working. Part three has come to a conclusion. The lowest level is complete, ready to go. I may add a few things as time goes on, but for now it is good to go. The middle deck is in place, ready for construction to begin. This is Boiler Dan 1, and as always, thanks for watching.